and welcome back to Open Studio. I'm Steve Leahy. Thanks for coming back. We are cranking here. All right, as promised from the last episode, I moved the camera. We'll try that, see if that's any better. Again, I think I'm going to be bumping it, but it's tough to find the right one when you need to be this close, but you guys are close, and I like it. All right, so we left off last week with just kind of getting the, the back deck of details in. What I have left to do is just kind of add that airbrushing. So what I'm going to do is I still have the really thin black in the brush. So first thing I'm going to do is take care of that shadow that's on the very back side of it. And if you remember from last week, I put that really thin. Use this because I can't point that small. I'll put this little black line right here just as kind of the edge for the shadow. So what I'm going to do from there is I'm going to grab a template as soon as I find one that will work. I need a better setup for my templates, my little templates. I made a little holder for it, but um, the spring that I use is a double, like there's a spring inside of a spring, and it doesn't really hold the templates. It gets stuck on the uh, second spring, and then they fall out. So i got to make a new one, which is a single spring. But anyway, that's not why you're here. <laughs> so I've got my, um, this is one of my favorite templates, these nail fingernail templates from Art Tool and Medea. So this, there are two of them in the set, and they've got all kinds of cool edges. So I'm going to use a straight edge here. I know it's a straight edge because it says straight edge on it. I know, wise ass. All right. Line that up really carefully. Like So I want to be, I want to see the line. And then what I'm going to do is just really lightly, and I mean really lightly, I just want to kind of aim at the edge of the template Here we go. Age, aim at the edge of the template, so not on the painting itself. And then that's going to let me kind of get just that slight overspray type of thing. It's just like the extra spray. Again, so I'm spraying onto the template itself. And then the, the stuff that's just kind of like going a little bit beyond the template is what I was actually painting with. And that gives me this very subtle black, you know, subtle, subtle amount of paint. If I were to hold this here and then just spray directly on here, it would. there's a much better chance that it would um, just kind of blast on there and, and be too much. So I'm going to do the same thing on the top edge here, but even lighter. Just a couple little hits just to kind of roll that over and that, that feels really good. So I'm happy with that. The other thing I'm going to do with the black, remember I did this repair last week down the bottom, there was a little bit of red showing. So I'm just going to really lightly go over that edge a little bit, and that will just take any of the paintbrush curse off it as well. This blue highlight here I'm not happy with, but um, we'll get to that as soon as we're done with the back deck, which I'm pretty sure, yeah, we're really close with the back, this whole back thing anyway. Yep, just kind of checking it out. Yeah, there's a few highlights left and that kind of fun stuff, but um, we're doing pretty good. All right, so let's um, get the brightest highlights in here. I need to put a little bit more white because, just like I said in the last episode, this white is kind of fading out. It's seen better days. Again, the white is just Createx Wicked Opaque White, which is difficult to tell in this bottle because I have a big bottle of this and I just transfer it into the four ounce bottle here. It just makes it easier to handle when it's in a small bottle like this. What I really should do is get a two ounce bottle of this too. It would be even easier to handle, but four ounces is fine. All right, highlights. So these bright white highlights are kind of the last, the last little bit. So they're going to appear in places like the uh, edge of the, that's too big. <laughs> I love it. Try to take some of that off. I'm going to have to fix that highlight. That's not what I want to do at all, but that's fine. Everything's good. Um, the top edge of the deck. I'll fix, I'll fix that in a second. Um, that was kind of a, a rookie mistake there. You know, I should have tested it out first before I went for it. 
So instead of um, coming out the way it needed it to come out, it just blobbed everywhere. Yeah, much better. So the there's some highlights on the um, on the other tail light. There's a little bit of a bright highlight on the back of the window here. What else we got? There's a little bit of red down there. I've got that. That's good. Okay. So now, really easy. Just going to fix the uh, gas cap. And I'm going to do that with a little bit of gray. So I'm just going to put the gray in that was on there originally that I kind of blobbed all over. And again, it's just really simply opaque white and black. Just grab that gray. And then what I can do is just kind of go in and pull that out a little bit. That's wonderful. All right, let's um, start moving around the rear quarter here. So again, that highlight right there, that bright blue highlight, I'm, I'm not a big fan of. So there's a way to, that I'll be able to take care of it pretty simply though. So I'm gonna do the same thing I do with the black. I'm gonna just grab a bunch of reducer and really wash this out. Oh, I killed this brush. I feel so terrible. <laughs> So I've got, again, I want to make sure it's dry. So I've, I've just put all this reducer and paint in it. So I just want to kind of palette it out a little bit and take some of that out. And then what I can do is the same thing as that black repair. I can just kind of go over this a couple times. It's important to let it dry in between because if you don't, you're just going to keep dragging paint, wet paint, and it's never going to cover. So you want to put that one coat on it and then let it dry like that. And then when you go to put the next coat on it, do the same thing. The tendency is to want to keep painting it until it's the color you want it, but like I'm doing now, which I shouldn't be doing. <laughs> but uh but yeah, if you take it slow and you let it dry in between, you'll you'll get like again, you'll get kind of that airbrushy control out of it, which is nice. Meaning the, you know, thin application of paint. There we go. Yeah, good. That took the curse off that. It pro probably went too much, but uh, meaning it's probably too dark now. But overall, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to leave it with that. Uh, big question. Yeah, I've already said I'm going to move down on this quarter. Basically, if you haven't already figured it out, I'm moving from left to right across this painting. Uh, and I think I've said it before that one of the big reasons to do that is because as I'm getting this stuff done here, um, my fingers aren't, you know, my fingers are on this part of the blade. So if anything happens to this part, I haven't even done this part yet. Where if I do it right to left, for instance, all this would be done and then when I'm painting over here, there's a, you know, the chance that I'll screw this side of the blade up. So with blades, I try to work left to right just because there's such a great chance of, you know, something kind of going sideways with it. All right. I did spray this. I can see it. I sprayed this whole thing. Uh, I either used either used um, UVLS satin, or if I was really smart, which I've been getting into lately, I've been using. Uh, it's going to be out of focus a little bit, but you can see it's 6,000 transparent sealer. So this is from the Autoborn sealer line from Createx, and this is the the. It's just transparent. It's clear. So I've been using that as kind of a barrier coat to help especially with the edges because the edges of these blades I've set up before as I'm working and got my fingers on here I it's so easy to just scratch off or to wear off the paint right on the edges but that transparent sealer does a great job at like protecting it and keeping it um, keeping it from getting damaged which is nice because with these razor blades I'm telling you the last step is always to fix the edges but so far with this thing I don't have any problem which is nice all right, before I move on to the, you know, the rest of the, the quarter here, quarter here, I know I just got back from New England, so everything's quarter and uh, give me a beer and nice kid. Um, <laughs> this wheel bothers me a lot. I know what happened. Well, I haven't done, I haven't really worked on it yet, but um, just keep seeing it in this weird flattened potato shape is like bugging the crap out of me. So what I think I might do is I might do a little bit of work on that. So just not for any other reason that, you know, that I won't have to, every time I look at it, get like this mini seizure. So I'm going to grab some gray. Basically that gray that I used to block it in. 
And now the reason why it's flat, and I, I'll, actually, let me show it to you. So the reason why it's flat is because there is, here you go, is because there is a um, little yellow, whatever they call that, um, parking lot stopper thing. <laughs> anyway, so it's right there at the bottom, and it cuts off the bottom of the wheel, so I don't have the bottom of the wheel. So when I cut this out, I just didn't do a really good job of um, replacing that. So we're going to fix that now. All right, so I've got the gray in there, and what I'm going to do is, this is really a... Um, this is really just a keep messing with it until until it's right type of thing. Uh, because of the perspective of the wheel, because of the angle of the car and all that, there's a lot going on here. So, um, so I do it the same way that I kind of did that repair with the black. I don't just say, okay, I think the wheel's gonna be here and then paint it in. What I'm doing is I'm going from the edge and just pushing it out a little bit you know, kind of rounding that off. This is probably a little too light, but it's still working. And again, this color doesn't have to be exact because all this is going to be much darker when it's done. So this is really just kind of a block in color. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I go a little bit, push it down a little bit, and then I lean way back and look at it. And I'm like, is that, that look okay? So now I can see the front edge of that tire is pushed out way too far. Looks like it's about to have some sort of tragic blowout. So I'm gonna grab some black and I'm gonna reintroduce the wheel well on the front edge of this. And I wanna make sure that I'm seeing it right, and I am, okay. Same thing on this. So again, I don't just like draw in where I think the wheel is ultimately gonna be. I'll just start on that edge where it bumps out too much and I'll just start carving it back. Now, Sometimes it works great. Sometimes I, you know, kind of sneak up on it. I get it. Everything looks good. But most of the time, it's not like that. Most of the time, like, I'll be pushing it and pushing it, and then I, I go a little too far. And then, okay, so now instead of bumping out here, it's way too flat. So then you just got to reverse the process. You know, you just, I go back to the gray and push it back out again. And it is really a back and forth thing until it looks the way it should and it's a great way to do it because there's no pressure to just like get it done in, in one shot on the first try you know so something to kind of keep in mind now I kind of wish that it was a little bit more difficult than that because that came together super fast that was pretty much you know pretty much it but I'm telling you it's it's especially with wheels it's a lot of back and forth um, so I still don't think that's super perfect, but at least now it's not, you know, making me want to, like, smash someone. <laughs> All right. Another quick thing I can do that will actually help a lot. I'll grab some of the red. Still got some black in it. Is that going to work? Yeah, it is definitely going to work. So same thing. Grab some of the red. This red's kind of had it, too. And up above here got some details right on the back deck that I can put in now and it'll pretty much finish the back deck which is nice so there's some reflections on that this little reflection right here is too blue but that's okay too because we can fix that again a too blue but it's really not because it's just the block in color that I use it's not like I was trying to match it you know okay so we'll finish the top edge of that. This is a little bit smaller. So we'll kind of cut that back to where it should be. There we go. I uh, like it. And then the spoiler on the back of this car. It's pretty subtle. But the way the angle is on it, it's, it's really red. So we're going to jump back to that. So it kind of trails along this top edge here. And then it ends in a little shot of red right at the end where the light kind of catches it. So just get that in there too. Lovely. So now that pretty much that back deck, except for the work that needs to be done on the glass is, is pretty much done. The work that needs to be done on the glass is really easy. It's just airbrushing, but it's airbrushing with blue and I don't want to load that in the brush right now. Um, one of the reasons why is because I'll probably treat all the windows the same, well, all the windows, the passenger window and the, the rear window. 
uh, those will be treated the same way, so I'll do both of those at the same time, and I, I don't want to do those yet. So um, I will, however, do that before I do all the trim on the side window, though, but we're not there yet. That'll, that'll probably be when I get to the door. <sighs> okay. Yeah, might as well. We put this, the marker, the side marker in, a couple details on this uh, quarter, and then that's pretty much done, too. We're really burning on this. I like it. All right. So the um, the separation, the body panel line between the rear quarter and then the, the tail of the car kind of comes down and moves over at an angle. The question is, is do I want to do I want to just guess and, and paint it in or do I want to kind of be accurate with this? And in this case, I kind of want to be accurate. So I'm going to do the little line trick for this. And I will show you what that is in case you missed it at some point. It's a neat trick you can do with airbrushing. And if you're trying to get like a specific line in, let's move this over so you can see what I'm doing like that. Okay. So if I hold this up right here, you can just barely see it in the copy. The line comes down at an angle here and then just scoots over and ends up right in the wheel well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the knife and cut that line and I cut it kind of deep into the like normally if I'm just cutting out a template I have a pretty light touch but this I'm kind of really kind of digging it in because I want that gap to be open the other thing I've done is I've left the very corner attached right here because all I'm using this for this cutout is to kind of place that line in the correct spot and I'll show you how that works in this instance, because it's the blade is so small, the painting itself is so small, this might be just a one and done. I may spray this and just have to connect the dots. But sometimes when I do this, I'll, I'll just use it as the, the guide and then I'll, I'll paint over that line till it's where it should be, you know, the thickness. But with this, it's going to give me a super, super close, fine, tight line. I just want to make sure this is really lined up well. This lining up on blades part is definitely the hardest part of the whole process. Because <laughs> again, you know, if these, if this template is off just a little bit, it's off a lot. So, all right. Same deal here with the most templates with this because it's so small. I put a magnet on top and I'll hold it down with my finger on the bottom. So it's better than putting a magnet on the bottom than trying to, you know, spray in the gap between the two magnets. Normally I would do this with a little bit thicker paint because a thicker paint tends not to give you um, any kind of underspray or, or rolling around, but this, this color will work as long as I'm really careful and not, you know, hose this thing down. So just again, really light layers on that. Just aim right at the center of the cutout. I'll do the diagonal one first and then shift my finger and do the horizontal one next. And this is totally painting by faith. I can see the paint going on the paper, but I have no idea what's going on underneath. I kind of do, but you know, I, just because I've done this so many times, but when you do this, and even now, I mean, like I, I, I so want to like flip it up and see it, but now here's the other thing too. If there's a way, normally when I do this on a bigger painting, I can put a bunch of magnets on the edge and then lift it up to see if it's an, if it's enough. But razor blades are tough because there's nowhere to really put the magnets, but I'm going to try it. I'll do it over here. And now I can move this and look at it with hopefully not having the, the template move. If the template moves, I immediately take it off because you'll never get it lined up again. It's just, it's, it'll always form a double line. That's perfect. 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 Let me show you what happened. So that little cutout just gave me that little tiny indication of a line there. And like I thought, you know, that's pretty much right on the money because it's so small. In fact, this diagonal is probably too thick. So I'll show you how to fix that too. But first I have to connect the corner. Remember I didn't cut out the corner. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of black. Yep. You got it. Okay. I want to make sure that was on a little bit of black. Make sure the paint, brush is really well palleted, meaning the point is really sharp. I'm going to start a fraction of the way into the diagonal. Get it, get the paint to start to flow. 
and then just drag that to the corner and run into the other line like that and that's good <clears throat> lovely 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 now the diagonal line make sure you guys are focused i think you are but we'll make sure yeah it's pretty tight okay to get rid of the um the thickness of that diagonal line a little bit i'm just going to grab some of the red now again i've mentioned it before i've been using a lot of the opaque line from createx and this is one of the advantages right here so the main body of this car is the thalo red this this thalo red color and uh, no not thalo red what am i saying pyro red let's think of the blue um so it is it's inherently opaque so it's going to cover which is great for this so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to again pallet the brush so i've got a really nice sharp point on that and palleting the brush just means i've got a, like wet paint in here so what i'm doing is i just kind of squish it squish the brush down a little bit and then just kind of point out the brush you know you drag it a little bit so that the brush tip is really really sharp and then with that i can kind of go up against same thing just kind of sneak up against that line and go over it and again it's a little bit of patience you know you i don't want to try to nail this because it's so easy to just put the red right on top of the black and then lose the black line. And I also want to keep it really thin too, because I don't want to have this big red line next to it either, because there is some highlights, this blue highlight that I put in on the car. If I get the red on that, it's going to show bright red. So I just go over that a few times, right up against the edge of that. And it still feels a little bit big. So we're going to give this a little bit of help. The way you do that is I'm going to grab some white and make a really deep pink. So the white is also opaque, obviously, but the white is going to cover a little bit better than the red. So I'm going to start with the pink. So I make this darker pink and then I, I, I cut back in on that black line. Again, this is going to show like a highlight, but I'm going to take care of that also in a second really lightly just again kind of sneak up on that line till the black line is the thickness that I want it to be and that's I think I can live with that so now I've got this pink line there on the upper side so I'm going to go back to the thalo red and just actually I need to drop a thalo red I'm trying to um stretch this drop of paint out on the palette and I don't have to this, uh, I left my wet palette open the other uh, last night or the night before, so a lot of the paint had a chance to you know, kind of start drying out. Um, normally, if I close it at the end of the night, the drop is ready to go in the next day, but um, like I said, I done screwed up on that one. So, okay, I've got straight pyrrole red. Again, I want to make sure it's palleted. Just make sure it's at a nice point. And now I could just kind of hit that pink line like that. Let that dry and we should be in good shape. Again, it's just rinse and repeat. If that's not enough, I just grab the dark pink and do it again until it feels like the right thickness. And yeah, I still think I think that's too much. I think you can see it too much. It's like a it's like he got in an accident and uh, the body guy didn't line up the gaps right. And with this car, I don't want that. So I'm going to do the same thing, grab a little bit of white, make a dark pink. This time I'll use some of the um, better red, meaning, you know, the, the new red here, because the, this stuff wasn't, the older stuff wasn't really flowing. So turn this so you guys can see what I'm doing. Same thing. This is the, uh, the pink. So just palette that out and do it again. So now one of the 
things that could happen, obviously, is if I screw up the pink and take too much of the black line out, now I'll have to repaint the black line. That's not a tragedy because I know exactly where the black line is supposed to be. Again, the only reason I did that cutout was that helped me line everything up, you know, put that line where it should be. That's all I really needed it for. So I know exactly where it is supposed to be now. So, you know, if I did lose that black line completely, it wouldn't be a disaster because I could just repaint it in. All right. Grab some of that red. Now that the pink is, you got to make sure the pink is dry too. Um, obviously, if the pink is dry and you go to put the red on it or the pink is wet and you go to put the red on it, you'll end up with uh, just a whole lot more pink. Then you don't want that. Oh, that's lovely. That's much better. Again, on any other painting, you know, it's like, would that, you know, do I need to do that? It depends. I mean, if you really want it like everything spot on, yeah, you got to do it. And that's how I feel about these. You know, the razor blade paintings, I never do a razor blade painting that's like quick. You know what I mean? It's never like an instance where, you know, I want to, I want to do a one hour razor blade. I just, I mean, I shouldn't say that when I'm at a show or something, that's a little bit different. Um, however, you know, usually it's like no corners are cut on these because it's one of the things that people know me by. So I want to make sure that they stay, stay as good as they can be. All right. I think we have enough time to kind of put in that marker light on the side. So the marker light, the reason why I don't have to cut out a little cutout for it, you can see it above here in the copy. That's it right there. Um, is because I have the, the uh, body line there. So I know exactly where it's supposed to go. Um, however, if I put the light in first before the line I would have cut out a template for it just so I could make sure it went in the right spot okay so I'm going to mix up a darker red just by using the pyro red and the opaque black and we're going to put the lens in first this might not be dark enough but I'd rather have it not dark enough no that's perfect and it lines up with the edge of that. That is lovely. The other thing that's going on here, so I had this pink here, maybe make it a little bit lighter. There is a highlight along the edge of that, that marker light. So again, same deal. I've got the pink in here, but I wanna palette it out so that that's really, really sharp. That, paintbrush I may this is going to be another one where I'll put this in and I may have to goof around with it to get it right but I'll try to get that highlight in underneath the marker light come on there we go yep that's too much it's all right though so it's it the line that I painted in was too big that's not terrible but it's still too big but it's okay so what I'll do is I'm going to hit it the same way that I just did the the other thing, remember that red covers that pink really well. So I'm going to turn this upside down so that I can get a good angle at it. Grab some of the red. Palette that. I can palette out on the palette too, obviously. But um, it's nice on you know, when you have a surface right nearby, you can kind of just make sure that it's okay by kind of painting on it. And this little magnet that I have that I'm holding it with has a ton of paint on it. So it's like painting on a painting. So it's great. All right, so now I'm just going to really carefully thin out that highlight. Put too much paint on this. You can always tell when you're trying to dry brush, I can always tell that there's too much paint when the paintbrush stroke ends with a little blob of wet paint. Like the paintbrush leaves a little bit of like a, like a wet, area of paint right at the end so that that whenever i see that that means you know i gotta I keep palleting it till it's till it doesn't do that but that's it now that that highlight underneath on the edge of that marker light is super like tiny like less than human hair tiny that's crazy but that's the way you do it you know you just kind of sneak up on it and make it smaller all right so I think that's good. I think we, um, we've, we've done enough. Um, so we get the whole back done, the uh, rear, rear quarter done. I think probably the next step is to get the, the rear window done and maybe the, um, the side window since it's a little bit of airbrushing. And then, uh, and then that'll be the whole 
back end of the car. So I think that's going to be good. All right. So if you're enjoying this, please do what these lovely people have done. You can support me by jumping on and becoming a member here on the YouTube channel, which will help out. You get to get all kinds of cool perks. I won't go through them all. They're on there. Uh, same thing with Patreon. If you want to support me through Patreon, that's awesome. And the free way, which is massive, is if you click that like button. And uh, if you're not already subscribed, please do and hang out with us. All right. So for Steve Leahy and Open Studio and the Mustang Blade, I will catch you guys on the next one. Thanks a lot.